Attorney John Lay here from Talented Learning. Welcome to the demonstration series of content uh, that we're putting out today. We're going to see a demonstration from LMS Portal. So Steve, take it away. So I've changed my screen around. I, I if you can, I hope you can see this, John. Now I'm displaying a sample portal. And again, the reason we call it the platform LMS portals is we're a learning management system that allows you to spin up new portals on demand. So in this case, we've mocked up a sample portal for a company called Acme Limited. Everything you're seeing on the screen now, John, is customizable. The, the top image, the, the text, the logo. If I scroll down, the courses that you see, the courses that you, that are, you choose to display on a portal, if you choose to display any courses, are for self-directed learning. And so I'm logged in as a user named Lisa, or I'm sorry, named Sarah. And Sarah's work, she's completed a course, the OSHA training course, and she's working through the, um, the selling course. So if we look at that course, and I'm gonna move this window a little bit, John. You can see that the course, when we structure a course, it's got some number of modules and every module can have any number of lessons. A lesson is a piece of digital content, whether it's a video, a PDF, a SCORM file or whatever it is. And then it could also have quizzes, assignments, some sort of assessment tool. The platform is mobile responsive. So while I'm showing you this on a laptop, you know, if I was on a desktop, if I was on a tablet, if I was on a smartphone, the platform would recognize the user device and format accordingly. Okay. So because I'm logged into Sarah, I have access to a dashboard. So from her dashboard, she can see kind of her, her recent activities. She's got a calendar, so she can see anything in red is something that's due. So she knows she's got to complete a, learnership, a leadership development path a little bit later this month. She can again see the courses that she's completed and working through. From here, she can access her learning path. So anytime a user is invited into a learning path, they get a notification message to the the, the administrator can oversee the enrollment. But a learning path, again, as you know, John, is a way to group courses for delivery in a logical progression. So the idea is the learner establishes some foundational knowledge before moving on to more complex topics. So it's a nice way to have structure to uh, the learning experience. If she's earned any certificates, she finds them here. And so one of the things we did, John, I think I mentioned this to you in an earlier conversation. We built in some social elements around the certificates. So once they, I don't know if you see this on LinkedIn, I see it all the time, that people are sharing their achievements on, on LinkedIn, they earn a certificate. or what. So we wanted to give that opportunities with a little bit of automation so she can share to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to Twitter. Nice benefit for the learner, but for the for the company or for the training pr provider, it's a pretty nice opportunity for some passive marketing, right? Because it's there, it's people getting their branding out there as they're sharing their achievements. And then finally, if she's, yeah, if, she, if she's invited into any discussion boards, she can access them here. So the discussion is called per review, some kind of a document was shared to read and review. And so we, we again, we thought adding this social element really supports the learning experience that's the kind of the front end piece john so far so good yeah it looks great um uh, graphically and visually it's really clean and easy to use i like how the home page instead of clicking everywhere it's you know one vertical page that has everything that you need as a learner it's a nice approach yeah thanks john i appreciate it so i'm going to jump over to the administrative side and I, sorry, I, if you see my cursor just moving for some reason, I'm, I'm moving around the, um, the Zoom stuff. So it's from this window, John, and I'm, I'm logged in as administrator. It's from this window that I can launch and manage different portals for different, for different training audiences. So right now I'm running three different portals for three different audiences can launch a new portal on demand, no, no involvement from the vendor. I can just launch on demand as the administrator. Once I launch a portal, I can get into the, the branding elements. And, you know, this, 
you're going to see, John, we can have a new portal live in, in minutes. I said 24 hours. I mean, we're talking minutes. So I just, I launch a portal. Now we get into the customization aspects, right? The the logo, the image. If I want to, if I want to leverage an API, each portal has its own REST API. So if you want to take the content from the from the learning program and push it out to an HRIS CRM system, you're able to do that. Mm -hmm. And get into some further branding aspects by getting into the um, the color schemes and all those things. You know, we really do want to give the, the client and the partner to match a website look and feel as much as they can. Once the customization is done, you can name your categories. Every portal will have some number of categories and really it's for, um, it's for navigation purposes. You can choose whether or not you want to display the categories on the portal, but you, you name your categories. And then once the categories are in place, you can build your courses. So, so you can see the portals that we have live. These are all published, meaning they're accessible by users. Uh, any course John has one of two statuses. It's either available as a standalone course, meaning the self-directed as we looked at, or it's part of a learning path. So of course it's either available on, I think they call push versus pull, right? John, the standing alone is the, the self-directed is pull. The learning path courses are pushed, that content is pushed out to specific users or groups of users. So if we look at a specific course, let's take a look at the one we saw on the user side. So again, it's three modules, just like we looked at. Can add a new module anytime we want to. Drop in lessons. I'm gonna move this window again, John, forgive me. And a lesson could be most any type of digital content. It could be a video, SCORM file, PDF. One thing I think, I, I mentally, John, I'm giving you credit for this. I think you said, you know what CB should do? You should take a live training and make it a whole course if they want to. I think that was something you mentioned on one of our conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that, John. I thought that was a good idea. All right. Yeah. Um, and then and the partners like it, the partners and clients like it. So almost any type of digital content can be a lesson. Or, or a course it's held. And then you can get into the kind of the assessment piece, right? Which is drop in your quizzes, set a minimum passing score. The quizzes are either true, false, or multiple choice. And then if you want to, issue assignments. And again, in the case of our hospital employee training partner, you know, the assignment is upload a video to us showing us how you, you know, splint an ankle or whatever it is. And so, but it could be, you know, essay of some sort, it you know, could be a, you know, a reflection, you know, for, for leadership. So lots of ways to use the assignment engine. What we did, John, is because so many of our partners are going to have a finite number of courses, but lots and lots of portals. And for them, they'll, they'll, they'll probably want to use the same course over and over for different portals. And so we built this library feature. And what that means is once you, if you build a course and save it to the library, you don't have to build that course over and over. You can publish it from the library into a new portal. So big time saving. And then once it's published to the new portal, if you want to modify it, you can. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we have this opportunity to build learning paths. If you're issuing assignments, you manage them here. These two assignments have a pending status. We can review them, decide whether they're pass, fail, or if we want more information. So the user management, for, for the user onboarding piece, we're giving them three options. If they want to, John, they can, they can allow the user to register themselves on a portal. Because every portal has a unique URL, the registration page is, is unique, so they can register themselves on a portal. But the administrator could add new users on kind of a one-off basis. Or if they're doing you know, more of a large training, they can upload all the participants in a CSV file. And it's also from here, if you want to take a look at the progress of any specific employee, you know, we can see Sarah, she, you know, she's logged in today. She's finished half of the courses she's enrolled in. So all that that data for an employee is here. 
But then if we want to take a look at something more in the aggregate, we can jump down to the reports area. I don't have a lot of data in this portal, John, but if we run a completed report from last month, you know, the report's going to populate and it's, it's branded for the, for the consistent branding for the portal. We can export it as an Excel or CSV. We can print it. We can email it, whatever we want to do with that data once we, once we gather it. I mentioned we have this ability to build certificates. So you, you brand them however you want to, whether it's branded for, for your company, for the client company. Uh, and then the certificates are, you can make them available for the completion of courses, learning certificates or both, of learning paths, I'm sorry, or both. We offer the live training component, component to support virtual classrooms and blended learning. And then we have this ability, John, to, um, to name a supervisor. So a supervisor is someone who's going to have some level of administrative permissions for that portal. So when you name a supervisor, the permissions are restricted to that portal only and to the level of permissions you give them. So in this case, we've got Jeff. He's going to be a um, supervisor on this portal. Maybe he's a stakeholder at the organization. So we're going to say, you know, Jeff can log in whenever he wants to and just run reports. Or we, he, we could let him manage his own users or whatever level of permissions we want to give him. Or maybe if we use an outsourced training provider, we just, you know, we let them just come in and build courses or lots of different ways to, to work with the supervisor permissions. And, you know, finally, the, the last thing for this call, John, is the discussion boards. And you know, we did think it was important to add a social element to the learning. And so you can attach a discussion board for, 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 you know, for an online forum to a course or to a user group. And then if you want to share a document, share a video, share something that they need to consume a piece of content, ask a question, whatever you want to do to get the discussion going. And then as users, as users make comments, you know, you, <clears throat> you have to approve them. These, these are two approved comments. We could delete them. We could add a comment ourselves to participate in the discussion. So, you know, we do like this offering this social element to the learning experience. I'm going to stop there for now, John. All that makes sense? Yeah, great. Uh, it's been, I don't know, maybe five or six months and you've been busy. There's all kinds of new things I didn't see the last time. It uh, looks great. Really expanding, yeah, thank your you, footprint of capa that. expanding your footprint of capabilities for sure. Yeah. Uh, and anything, what's on next on the horizon? So I think we're going to get, we're going to get that event module and I do like the idea of allowing our partners to because there are a lot of these guys done you know they're still doing on-site events and um putting everything under one umbrella I think is going to help a lot and that's the feedback that I'm getting from from my partners. Um I, I think looking at that global repository that's that's a later this year thing but that that is something that um that we're very interested in. I think we want to get a, a little bit more. We want to turn the certificate module into more of a design studio. We want the um, the administrators, the supervisors, to have a, you know, really a lot of fun in terms of how they're rewarding the completion of courses and learning paths. Um, so I think those are those are kind of the short term the short term things. But you know, when when partners come to us and they tell us that they have something that's going to help them make more money, John that gets bumped to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe it. Well, it's interesting. Uh, and how about, uh, not how much, but how do you go about uh, charging for this? Is it, uh... So the pricing is, is on a, so the capacity that we need to discuss is really how many portals and how many users do you think you need? And so, they might have a need for, you know, 10 portals across the 10 portals. They might need a thousand users, you know, maybe 500 of them will go to one and 200 to another. Um, so we, we price on a, some combination of portals 
and users. But you know, John, it very quickly turns into something a custom conversation. Yeah. Most of our pricing just ends up being custom because our, you know, of course we want to make our money, but we want to make sure we're we're building on a pricing schedule for each partner that gives them the margin they need to make this worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thanks, Steve, for uh, stopping by the show here and and showing us uh, listeners. If you ever wanted to see how an LMS was born, you you just saw it. Um, you know, this went from zero to sixty here in just a few short years, and you just see the depth of capability across the different areas, building and growing from course management, user management, uh, reporting portals. Um, you know, there's a lot of use cases for this as a essentially a consultant here at, at town to learning, helping uh, buyers buy LMSs. You know, I have lots of different clients, lots of cl- small consultancies have, you know, 10, 15, 20 clients that, you know, might have thousands of, of learners across, um, you know, the, those different areas to, to have a portal for, you know, each one of your clients ongoing where you can push education and uh, that's combined even with your consulting services uh, for example, is is like a great use of application like this. You can spin it up really easy and fast, and push that training out, and you know have it be tailored to each one of those uh, different clients that you have with different subsets of your con- content. And so that's a the the consultancy example, but you know every single training company has you know that same level of need with all of their B two B type clients. And so uh, I like the application. It fits right in uh, here at Talent to Learning with uh, the types of readers and listeners that we have in extended enterprise or really managing clients with learners, uh, sometimes even clients that have clients that have learners, you know, that next level of uh, the B2B2B. But uh, I can certainly see the application and uh, listeners out there or viewers uh, in this case, you know, especially if, you know, you're in your first, you know, learning management system or looking for a first learning management system, or maybe you're struggling with opening up portals uh, with your current one, you know, this is a nice, uh, especially getting in on the ground floor here with Steve and custom pricing, you know, it's a great opportunity to probably get in at a, at a great value price um, before this thing blows its doors off here globally (laughs) here in a few years. So early adopters, uh, you have the advantage uh, to get in on something like this and, and see how it'd be a really easy way to augment your business without having to be a, a technical wizard. In fact, you could pretty much be a technical dummy, I think, and set and maintain this. It's really simple and easy to use. Uh, so uh, there you have it, listeners. Thanks for watching or viewers. Thanks for watching another uh, episode of the Executive Briefing Series. Now you know why this is my favorite series, because you just get to see things that you won't see anywhere else. And uh, and I certainly appreciate you see, stopping by, Steve, and, and showing us what you got. So congratulations. Thanks, John. Great to talk to you as always. All right. Likewise. Likewise. All right, listeners, we'll see you on the next. Have a great day.